Welcome everyone to the EED webinar number 13. It is May 13th and our theme today is releasing fear and taming obstacles. Welcome everyone joining live and welcome everyone watching the recording. So um, this webinar is about how fear and obstacles work with the creative cycle. Normally we tend to push fear away or we make it an enemy we'll push obstacles away or we'll make it an enemy. And what I'm presenting here is a way to look at both the creative cycle and fear, resistance, obstacles as a way for them to work together so that you don't need to try to eliminate resistance or fear or any obstacles, but actually use them as a way to enhance creativity. And there's, um, some special ways to treat fear and obstacles and resistance. It has a function, which I'm gonna show you. And uh, there are ways to get around fear and obstacles or get around our normally conditioned reactions to these things, okay? So I'm gonna show you, uh, a, a, let's say a creative way to, to navigate around these things and then include them. So what I'll say up front is there is a time and place for fear. There is a time to put it aside, and then there isn't a time for uh, you to embrace it or, or confront it, all right? Um, as we go along, I'm gonna encourage you to jump in with questions or comments. I'll give opportunities for you to um, add in your questions and comments, but don't wait for me to invite you. Please just uh, jump in at any time, all right? All right. Yeah, any, anybody have anything to say right now? as we get into it? Okay, good. Um, so as an overview, what are we discovering? More specifically, I'm giving you an overview of the creative cycle, how that works um, energetically within us and without, meaning outside of ourselves, um, and the role that fear and obstacles play in that cycle and then how to treat fear and obstacles so that they actually make the process more dynamic, all right? Um, without fear and obstacles, we actually wouldn't really have a creative cycle. So just sit on that for a bit. And uh, I don't know if that feels controversial or not. To me, it doesn't, but to others, it may. It may spark some things. So if it does, let me know. Feel free to disagree as well. Yeah, go ahead, Benjamin. It's just uh, an impulse from my side. Yeah. So, so fear for itself is not bad. No. Uh, and obstacles not as its antithesis is. But what might face frustration inside of us is that we don't move. So we get stuck in one thing. So yeah. it's, it's a movement to get into the movement. Uh, what do you think about that perception? Is that consistent with what, what you yeah, try that is, to Yeah, that is consistent. It's, okay. it, this is more about, so first I want to show you how the creative cycle looks. Right? I'll give you a way. I'm, I'm mapping it out for you to see it in its different phases. Plus, then I'm showing you the function of fear and obstacles. Mm -hmm. Then um, it will shift your relationship to fear and obstacles. Because really it's how we are in relationship to fear. So it's, it's raise a, 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 a subtle shift towards using fear as a, as a tool. Yeah, you're using it as a tool, okay? okay? And it is there as a natural tool for us, but we tend to interpret it in a, in a way that works against our creativity, all right? And it's, it's there to work with our creativity, so we just need to clean up our perception of it and our relationship with it. So just, just, just to exaggerate uh, uh, the perception to some extent, um, so let's accept what about uh, what if we accept fear as a gift yeah it's it's kind of like that and for some people they'll say cool. what, do you, what the hell are you talking about what do you mean fear is a gift <laughs> so, <laughs> it's it's once we start understanding the function 
then we can start to see how we can start perceiving it as a gift, all right? So there's, there's some workarounds that we have to do. We have to actually unlearn a few things in order to see it differently, all right? Um, so that brings us to our next point is, I'm gonna give you some guidelines of when to know, of how to know when to engage with fear and when not to. There's, again, there's a time and a place. And then how to move around fear so you can shift your focus. Because really what this requires is shifting your focus into fear or away from fear, into the obstacle or away from the obstacle. And when you're focusing away from fear or the obstacle, then I'm showing you what do you focus on instead, all right? And then you bring it back into counterbalance. What we talk about in these webinars has a lot to do with polarity and counterbalancing those polarities, okay? Just like we breathe in and we breathe out, that's a polarity. Inhalation, exhalation, it's the same thing with the creative cycle, all right? Um, and then from there, once we start understanding fear, obstacles are working very much in the same way. And then we can use it to enhance our creativity. And I'll, 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 I'm mapping it out so you can see how to work around it and use it as an enhancement. Um, any other comments there initially as we dive in here? Or just give me a thumbs up that this is uh, feeling okay. All right, great. Um, so, um, Charlene, I think this is your first time joining us. And um, for those listening to the recording, this might be your first time too. So I will do a brief rundown of what exactly is Emergent Essence Dynamics. So it gives you a little bit of context of where we're coming from on how we describe and explain these things, like the creative cycle and our relationship to fear. So EED is treating everything as in relationship. We are in relationship with everything and all relationships are following unique patterns that are actually based on fractals, meaning it's a repeating pattern that works from the very smallest scale to the very largest scale. And you can have patterns within patterns, but they're all the basically the same unit, just um, uh, working on top of each other in layers, but it's really, you can, it's just one pattern basically, in all its variations. Everything is working in cycles. Those cycles, those patterns, they're driving the relationship, which is driving both the person and the issue. So you have a person in relationship with another person. You have a person in relationship with an issue. It's all following patterns. Um, so what EED does is it's a, it's a universal model. It goes across the board in all kinds of disciplines dealing with human dynamics and what we're doing is we're pinpointing those fundamental patterns that drive the dynamics. And what we can do then is um, apply that to coaching or leadership or mediation or facilitation, healing or any interpersonal interactions. And um, what we're looking at is first identifying those patterns and then we can shift the patterns. But the difference here is that we are focusing on our natural resilience first. We're not rushing in to shift any patterns. We want to establish a resilient base within the person first so that they're not fighting or fleeing or clinging to the pattern. So what, that, what resilience does is it neutralizes most of the resistance. It has the person feel uh, their own innate strength, their own innate vitality, uh, their own sense of timelessness. And from there, we can start looking at what are the patterns that are getting revealed through the way they interact and behave. And then we can shift that pattern in a resilient space. When we are in a resilient space, we're more fluid, flexible, and, and adaptable. Meaning our ego is not creating a strong shield to protect us, that shield is coming down because when we're in a resilient place, those shields aren't necessary because we're feeling a sense of permanence within ourselves. And therefore we can afford the flexibility to shift patterns around and actually reprogram ourselves. It's like we're moving down into source code programming of ourselves and on releasing ourselves from previous conditioning and we can decide from our own autonomy what program we want to put in place. That then 
shifts the, the person and multiple issues because the pattern is working in many areas at once. That was a little bit different than what I've done last time. So um, just let me know if you have any comments or questions there on how I've introduced that. And what I will say is that what we're looking here at is the patterns of um, how we create. The process of creation follows its own unique pattern or cycle, okay? And that influences how we create ourselves and how we create events in our life, how we create, move things from idea to full manifestation. So this will tie in a little bit of how we move from into different phases of creativity, different phases of consciousness, which will also include um, where we put our focus and, int and intention, and that relates back to law of attraction. And we have uh, previous webinars on all of those things. You can always email me, contact me, if you would love to hear those previous recordings, okay? How are we doing? Just checking uh, in. I like it. I've, um... I find that the patterns that we can recognize and shift are kind of multiple by themselves. Like, like in one polarity, there might be like five or six patterns that we can observe there. Mm -hmm. And then we can shift them. And we can also see how different or the same patterns kind of pop up in different yeah, environments. So just had to yeah, say. You'll, 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 like what creates complexity is when that fractal starts to accumulate upon itself. So it will create its variations. And what we're seeing is the sort of like the, the top level of all these patterns, which looks like so much variation, so much complexity. And what EED does is it starts focusing in on these patterns and it starts digging through the layers it's not reductionist, but it, it, it will see how all of these patterns relate to each other in a holistic fashion. Mm. And what you're basically doing is you're taking away the complexity and bringing, bringing it down to its sort of root cause simplicity, all right? Yeah, right. So can, and then from there, you can build back up to, to the complexity and the complexity actually makes sense, right? Because the same pattern will look differently in different environments. Yeah. Yeah. So root patterns and means, okay, strip away complexity. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's look at what is the creative cycle. Now, one of the best ways to look at the creative cycle is through the seasons. Let's look at nature. How does nature create? All right. We can use this as a model. We have four seasons. We have spring, summer, autumn, winter. All right, and the, the creative cycle begins in spring, all right? So at the beginning of spring, we have an impulse. This is when life begins. We have a seed, we have an idea, something germinates, all right? And then we uh, feed that impulse so it generates more and more energy. Okay, it, it starts to take root. It, it, it brings in life, nutrients, vitality, so that it can gain strength, create a stronghold. The, the, the seed uh, sprouts, it starts growing roots, it starts growing a stem, but it takes um, root into the soil and anchors itself. And it is full of life and energy, all right? That's the generation phase. Then it begins to become... Uh, more detailed, it branches out, it starts to unfold, expand. This is a construction phase, all right? This is where you're starting to see the, the various branches and leaves and it starts to get more complex and it starts to fill itself out. And then it reaches its full expression where the plant produces its fruits, where it's gonna reproduce itself. And those fruits fall back to the ground and then they take a hibernation period of relaxation in winter and then those seeds sprout again for another cycle all right now our creative cycle is very similar we'll have the impulse the original idea and then we'll connect with that idea and start to generate emotional investment in it create some some um, vision 
in it, we go into a blueprinting phase, all right? Then we take on the actual construction. This is where we're developing strategies, we're taking actions, we're building the idea into a form. And then you get the full expression, the fruits of your labor, there's the final product, okay? And you can enjoy the rewards of that um, creation. And then there is a rest period so that the next idea can come, all right? So, what we have on the left side here is an internal buildup of energy. The impulse in the generation phase is largely internal. I'm not saying it's fully internal, but it's largely an internal phase. We get the idea internally. We start to build emotional investment in it. We start to build the vision in it. We're creating desire to create, and it becomes a clearer and clearer picture of what we want to create. It's like we're designing it internally in our imagination. That charge of energy will build up, build up, build up enough that it then wants to discharge and move externally so that we start taking action. There's a release of energy where we want to begin uh, constructing, taking the idea into form, okay? This is where we're building more strategies, we're taking action, and then we, we do end up with the final product, and that's where we can, again, enjoy the fruits of our labor, all right? Appreciate what we've created, receive the rewards, the accolades, the applause. It has its use, its function, we're actually using it. We use the um, idea of a house, I get an idea for a house. That's the impulse. Um, I'm going to create the, the, the blueprints, the, the plans, the vision of, of what this house can look like. I'm gonna draw it all out on paper. Then I'm actually going to gather the materials in the construction phase and start building the foundation and start erecting the structure of the house until finally I have the final product where I can go and live in the house, use it and enjoy it. That's the expression phase. How are you guys doing with that so far? Or are there any questions or disputes or what um, makes sense here? Anyone? Or is this pretty common knowledge what you're seeing so far? Okay. So what we want to look here is, okay, so friction. Why don't we just like have an idea, generate it, construct it, and express it? Why isn't it just like an easy, easy, easy thing? Well, it's because we're also working with energy cycles. We've got a buildup of energy, and then we've got a release of energy. So the energy from winter starts to activate, wake up. It builds, 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 builds until we come to like say the summer solstice where that's the highest point of energetic activity and it releases. Then there is a dissipation of energy as everything takes form, everything starts to die down. The fruits begin to fall to the ground and then they begin to be absorbed in the ground and there it, we're going back to inertia, the sleep of winter where things can then rest. Then that's like an exhale of energy. Then naturally, when you exhale, there's an impulse to inhale, inhale energy, gather up energy, gather up, gather up the charge, the charge, the charge, and then release it. And that's how the cycle works. Now, it's not just a one-way street, okay? So as we build up energy, there is a counter energy that wants to go back to sleep. It wants, so we have a charging up where we want to build up, build up, build up and centralize our energy. There is another force that wants to dissipate that energy. So this is the friction. This you could call resistance to charge it up because it wants to dissipate. That's what we could call our internal fear. I get an idea. I start to invest in it, and then I think, no, maybe it's not a great idea. I should just let it go. So this is an internal battle where every, the more we charge it up, the more we're going to meet a resistance to say, no, 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 let it go, let it go, let it dissipate. Or charge it up and release it way too early where it can't get done. 
okay? It's not charged up enough or where we abandon the idea, okay? Are you guys following this? Is this making sense what I'm saying or, or not? This is a natural resistance. Now, the more we get the friction, actually the more charge we can create if we have a healthy relationship to that natural resistance, okay? If we allow that resistance to dominate, we're gonna lose the impulse. But we can use that resistance to actually create more friction to further charge. You know that if you rub your hands lightly together, you'll get a little bit of heat. But if you really rub faster with more pressure, you're going to get a lot of heat. So it is through friction that we can actually get even more energy, more of an energy buildup. Okay, so one way to create a healthy relationship to fear is to understand that that resistance is natural. We don't need to focus on the resistance. We need to focus on the charging up of the energy and allow that of, uh, of friction not to work against us, but to work for us. And I'll show you how we can let that friction inform us on how to charge it up even more. Yeah, go ahead, Benjamin. Do I understand you correctly, Troy, that it would be razor perceiving fear to shift its polarity than to perceive it as a bad thing as such? Yeah, don't think of it as a bad thing. Our first reaction to the fear will be, I have an idea to start a new business. It would be really great if I could have a business that, I don't know, helps the homeless, for example. And then I think, oh, but maybe I'm not good enough for that. Or maybe I'm not skilled enough. Or maybe people will laugh at me. Or maybe it won't work. Or there's too many businesses like that already. And I kill the idea. So this is, in this example, the resistance to charge. Right. It's like, don't, don't charge it up further, just let it go. And, I, and what I've done is I, I've been on the charging up track, and then I switched tracks, and I followed the dissipation. Okay? Whereas I could say, I've got an idea for a business. Yeah, of course it might work, might not work, but... I'm gonna still explore what's charging up here. What am I invested in? What is this idea? Of course, it might take me back, but um, I, 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 I'm still choosing to stay on this dominant track of charging up, understanding that there will be a natural resistance, okay? I'm gonna show you that that resistance actually can feed the charging so that the charging becomes more and more concrete. It becomes a better and a better idea. It's like, Maybe your idea doesn't work. Well, I don't have to buy into that. It doesn't work. I can investigate why wouldn't it work. And then I can start using the charging up of creativity to fill in those gaps as so, opposed to abandoning the idea. Sort of abusing the resistance to charge to calibrate the charting process. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And that resistance is also there to keep the charge in control so it doesn't like fly off the handle somewhere. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm so excited about my business. Now I'm going to sell my house and, and I'm going to, you know, I don't know, take, take an extra loan and all that. And I'm going to dump all my money in this. And I never really thought it through. I'm just so excited about the idea. Do you understand? If there was no resistance, it wouldn't keep me in check. All right. So raise it to understand the resistance to charge as a check, as a test for yeah. the charging process. Yeah, so that the charge remains in focus as opposed to just um, either flying off or uh, becoming so charged up that it gets blind to what, what it what where it is in the world or where it's going, all right? It, it helps focus the direction of it, okay? So I say lucid. Troy, is this in a sense related to the example you outlined in another webinar where you said, um, we are building a structure here. So mm -hmm. deconstructing the stru structure is a test whether it's solid enough. Is this related to this? Yeah, that's very much related. Oh. Very much related, okay? Okay. So well, it's not, it's not an, an naive thing that we are only on the green line, which creates the other polarity. It's razor rebalancing it. Hey, fears are natural, a natural thing to test whether we are on track on the green side. That's right. 
That's right. We need to know we're on the, we know we're on the green track. That's where, like, where am I in the seasons here? Okay. So we are constructing, constructing on the green track and mm -hmm. we are still have our checks on, on uh, the, the orange one. So, yeah. but we are accepting the orange one. Yes, we accept it. We are not it. deciding for one. Mm -hmm. So how do we integrate them? I'm going to show you in the next slide. Cool. I'm going to show you how, uh, another way to look at this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these both are like a natural current. It's almost like the positive and negative of electricity working together, all right? Now, as we cross the summer solstice here and we, we move into the more external phase where we're now, we've charged up all our energy, all our creative cre creativity, investment, and idea, and we're ready to act upon it, dissipate it, radiate it, okay? We need to move now into the external world to make, bring the idea to fruition, to form. There then will be a counter flow, which means, no, I still want to build up the energy. What that looks like is a block of the release, an obstacle, meaning, no, 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 withhold the idea, withhold the idea, charge it up more, charge it up, don't release it yet, okay? So this is what can happen where, where we can make all, have these great ideas, have plans, and then we decide I won't act upon it. And we've got all this stored up energy inside us that can't get released because we keep withholding it, holding it in, all right? Eventually, it could just turn toxic and, 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 and then just dissipate again the other way. Here is where we need to release. We will get a resistance to release. Like, wait a minute. Are you sure? Wait a minute. I'm not going to let you release it over there. I'm going to put up a, a, a roadblock for you here. So what we need to do is acknowledge that obstacles exist, but they're actually meant to focus the release. Where are you focusing your release? Where are you focusing your strategy? Let the blocks inform your actions and strategy so that you can get more and more of a focused and pure release, all right? And I'm gonna show you what that looks like in the next slide. This can happen from the outside world. It can also happen from us internally, that we block ourselves or we literally have roadblocks on the road, uh, uh, on our path of trying to bring this idea to fruition, okay? Like, you'll call those challenges. now. If we don't have enough stored up energy, we'll probably give up on the challenges, okay? But if we have enough stored up energy and we keep focusing on using that green track to let it release as opposed to withholding <clears throat> that energy, we'll find the creativity to work with the obstacles so that we actually get, um, let's say a more clean and pure release of our creative energy where the, 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 um, our creativity is not used to fight the obstacle, but it's used to integrate the obstacle so that we can actually have a proper flow. Let me know if that's making sense. I'm starting to have trouble finding my words here, but tell me what you're understanding here. So would it be, would it be, to put it in another analogy, like water. So the water is not flowing through an obstacle, it's flowing around. So finding creative ways to go about them. Right, yeah. You're allowing this counter flow to help steer your path, okay? So I've so got a the boulder. guide post raises than an obstacle. Right, so there's an obstacle in front of me. I'm not going to stop my flow of release. I can flow around it, over top of it, or right through it, right? But I, but I don't need to wish away that obstacle or stop my flow. I need to integrate with it. I'm allowing the obstacle to influence my path, just not direct my path. Okay? Just suppose you, you are a stream of water approaching an obstacle. So if you get stuck in, in your fear, you, you basically, you, you try to go through the obstacle, which is not uh, the characteristic of water. Instead, it accepts the ob obstacle as, as given and f finds a way out of it. That's right. A way out, around, it integrates. 
okay? So basically there's, there's not, not really the distinction anymore for, for the stream of water between an obstacle and, and being on track. Basically, as paradoxical as it might sound, the obstacle brings you back on track. Yeah, it does. It actually informs your track. All right. Wow. Okay, what's the wow in that? <laughs> it's just a realization that there might be more power in the obstacle than being on track. That's right. That's yeah, it, it'll give you a new layer. It'll give you a new layer to your track. Okay, and that's it, what we're it informs it uh, with a different quality. I feel. Yes, and it can make your flow of release even stronger, and it can make the fruits of your labor even better. Meaning more reward, more juice in the fruit, so to speak. Okay. Yeah. And again. What we tend to do is we meet the first obstacle and we switch tracks. We buy into this, this counter flow as opposed to strength and uh, uh, staying focused on this flow of release while integrating being like water. Like water doesn't get scared of the boulder. Okay, it doesn't stop its flow. It just keeps flowing and it, it actually incorporates the boulder. Okay, and flows around it or with it. Okay, it carves a new path because it's focused on this flow of release. We tend to stop that flow of release and disconnect from it, and we buy into this counter flow, okay? That's, that's making us withhold our energy, withhold our plans, withhold our actions, okay? So just because you meet an obstacle does not mean you, your idea is bad or that your strategy is bad. All it's saying is take pause and consider this integrate this into your flow and that's where you need to be connected with the creativity that's where the real creativity comes in because it's it's not just an individual creative act it's a co-creative act you're co-creating with your external world and with other people all right this also holds you in check so it's not uh, an ego-driven, isolated creation. It's a creation that integrates with your environment. How are you guys doing with that? It's very good. Okay. All right. Mm. I have to apologize if there's uh, an issue with sound quality because for some reason, <clears throat> the computer is not accepting my earphones, so it's, I don't even know why I'm wearing them. So I'm basically on speaker here. Um, okay, let's look at the next slide then, because I'll show you another way to look at this. Here's our four phases, all right? We've got, now I've renamed them a little bit, but we've got our root idea, and, and then we've got our desire or our investment or our drive, that's the generation of energy. Then we've got our mental focus, which could be our strategy, our construction, or um, designing. Then we've got our actual action and function, where we're, we're, and the full expression of the creative idea. This is where the idea takes full form. We have to create this, the, the strategy and the construction in phase three in order for it to be the full product in phase four. Now, this is related to the eight circuits of consciousness, which I discovered, uh, not discovered, which I discussed in um, webinar 11, which was two webinars ago. Um, this is, oh, hold on, I'm just going to plug in the computer. Um, this is circuit, these are our terrestrial circuits, so meaning our earthly circuits of consciousness, meaning I'm focused on the body, nurturing the body. This is where I get my root vitality, my resilience. This is my emotional circuit, circuit two. This is where I'm gonna get my drive, my sense of movement. It's all about territory, it can have power struggles, political struggles in there, but it is all about being in relationship with my territory. So this is our emotional circuit. Then we have our mental circuit. This is where we do mental mapping. This is where we focus, make sense of our world around us. And then circuit four is our social circuit where we're in relationship 
and dynamically interacting with everything around us. It's our social function. It's our sexual function, all right? Those are our four terrestrial circuits. From circuit four, we can then wrap back around to circuit one. So when we're looking at a creative manifestation, we have our root idea, the drive behind it, the next idea, which is the fruit of our labor, okay? Just let me know if I'm cutting out. Ask me to repeat because it's just showing my internet is a bit unstable. So, um, so like I said, these now here's where fear lives. It's going to live primarily between our drive and our strategy. So normally we get an idea and then we might rush into strategy, but then we get fear and we'll say, oh, not a good idea. Or we get our idea and we build it up in our minds. We say, yeah, it's a great idea, but now how do I make it happen? Suddenly fear comes in, okay? So fear will normally live between moving from idea into strategy or from the desire to create into the strategy to create, all right? Where do obstacles live? It lives here where we're taking action. I'm going to take the action, but I bump into my roadblocks. And so then it's stopping me from having the full creation or enjoying the full fruits of my labor. All right. Um, so how do we get around this? Okay. Because I'll have an idea. I really want to do it. Oops, there's fear. That fear might take over my desire. I still might move into strategy, but now it's a fear-driven stat strategy, fear-driven action, and then I run into an obstacle. Now I'm even more stressed and, and with anxiety. So I might even fight those obstacles and fight through those obstacles. Now I've got a bad fruit because it's just filled with stress, anxiety, and fear. Or I've given up on the idea because of fear, or I've given up on the creation because of the obstacle. Are you guys seeing here how this, these two places are roadblocks here? If we only follow this terrestrial track. So let me know if this is making sense or, or how this is mapping out for you or if there's any comments here. Or just give me a thumbs up. <laughs> well, I'm, a, I'm striking a little bit uh, between uh, two and three where you, where you injected that fear. Could you... Is there an example which could make it more clear? Yeah, okay. Well, also remember in this previous slide, <laughs> we had that switching over to the summer solstice. This is when I'm building up the energy and suddenly I'm going to discharge it. Fear, before, just before I discharge, fear may come up right here. For example, many times in a coaching conversation or even just in a friend-to-friend -friend conversation, you can be... I, you know, talking ideas and, and it sounds great and you're visioning and saying, oh my God, yeah, we could create this new business and wow, that's great. And what if, and what if, and what if, and what if, okay, great. Yeah, it's going to be great, great, great. We're going to feed the world. We're going to, we're going to solve world hunger here with this new business. And then we say, okay, let's go out and do it. Oh! put on the brakes. Yeah, but ooh, ooh, do we have enough money? Ooh, but, you know, what's my mom going to say? What are my friends going to say? Do I, am I really qualified here? Am I really competent? It's that in, as soon as we move into the release of the energy, that fear will, will come in and say, whoa, whoa, wait, stop. We have so many great ideas that we could be invested in, but as soon as we say, what are you going to do? Boom, we can deflate, Okay. So we can even say, yeah, I got a plan. And then we say, when are you going to do it? How will I know? And boom, we don't take the action. Okay. Is taking actions the release of energy or? No. Okay. So just, just to get that right, could you just go back to the previous slide? No. You mentioned in the, in, the, in the lower left corner, resistance to charge is equivalent to fear, right? Yeah, that's if I'm, if I'm internally... Um, doubting my idea, fearing my idea, fearing my competency, fearing my skills, etc. right? Fearing my ability, fearing, do I deserve this idea? Okay, the, all kinds of fears can come up to make me not invest in the idea, not charge it up, okay?
okay? It's when I cross this line and I'm about to share it with the world, go out into the world and start building it, expressing it. Okay. Okay, so it's two sided basically. The charging process gets stuck yep. and the release process gets yep. stuck. On gets on stuck. the left, it's it's the fear on the right, it's the obstacle. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm not okay. saying that, that fear um fear doesn't live I mean fear can live all through this, all right. Obstacles can live all through this. What I'm saying here is when you're taking action, you meet the real concrete obstacles. Here, when you're strategizing, those are imagined obstacles, possibilities. Here in the idea phase, this might be, you're not so connected to your own root resilience, not connected so much to yourself, fear can set in, but fear will definitely come in when you start creating the desire because you're about to move on it. That's where fear is really going to come in. Okay, it's going to make it's going to stop you from making the strategy. Okay, so fear can live anywhere here, but I'm saying this is where it's strongest. This is where it's going to hit the strongest between desire and strategy. Okay, and obstacles are going to hit the strongest once you're taking the action, attempting the actions. They could stop you from producing the fruit of your labor. Is that clarifying it a little bit more, Benjamin? For you? Yes. So it's it's constructing the house where I have the real obstacles. So they they are raises the physical ones in reality, whereas fear are the equivalent in in, in the mental sphere, which are yeah. make up in the blueprint phase. Would you say yeah. so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm saying this is okay. where they hit the strongest. Okay. I'm not saying that's the only place they hit, but that I'm saying are the strong points. These are the places where it could shut down the whole creative cycle, okay? And have you abandon the plan or the idea. So we have also the upper circuits, which we discussed in the previous webinar, number 11, which is uh, awakening the higher mind. And we can access all of these upper circuits. I'm just gonna briefly go through them, but I'm gonna relate them to the creative cycle, how they enhance the creative cycle. Now, this, these are transpersonal, meaning they're beyond our ego, they're beyond identity. The lower circuits have everything to do with our identity and our ego, our survival strategies. These upper circuits have nothing to do with survival. It's more about thriving, all right? Here's where all our needs are taken care of and we're free to explore our higher levels of consciousness, our higher levels of imagination, our connection to source, etc. So related to the body, when our body's needs are taken care of, we can focus within the body and pull out body wisdom. That's through pleasure. This has to do with energy, pleasure, and wisdom, innate wisdom within ourselves, all right? If this is to do, with, if circuit two is to do with our emotional, our emotions, our power struggles, our territory, it's about movement. This is moving through our dreams and our vision. This is moving through the imagination. This is higher vision, okay? Circuit six. Um, if circuit three is our mental circuit where we map out the world around us, this circuit seven is where we move into more of a cosmic con consciousness of how everything is interrelated in the world. Everything is in a dynamic relationship, a cosmic web. This is cause and effect. This is synchronicity. How everything has a purpose. Everything um, is interrelated. Nothing is in isolation. Okay. Um, that's the universal uh, cosmic circuit. And then if circuit four is about our social interactions, about function, roles, it has to do with taking action, creating. This is the source of creativity, the upper circuit, creator consciousness, all right? This is the, the, like the, the genius mind of the artist, for example. It's just the pure flow of creativity. That's what circuit eight is, all right? So the way we get around fear and obstacles is we are alternating circuits, all right, in this sort of a zigzag pattern, all right? Our idea starts from the root. We'll build investment in it, but before we move into strategy, we'll connect that desire with the pleasure circuit, 
okay? So that this becomes pleasurable desire that can feed back to the idea and to the resilience, all right? There we gain more wisdom and we can use that wisdom to feed a higher vision of that idea. So that the idea goes beyond just terrestrial needs. This can go well beyond our imagination, okay? Then from that higher vision, we can pull down that information into a concrete strategy and there we've bypassed the fear. Because the fear is keeping us, it's not only killing the idea, but it's keeping us onto the earth. Whereas when we come in from higher inspiration, another way to call circuit five, that's just inspiration, inner or outer inspiration. We're using the inspiration to feed the vision, which then feeds the strategy. All right? That's one way around fear. Okay. Then if we want, um, well, let me jump ahead here. Then, then we can move through these other phases. We have the fruit of our labor, but that is coming from a higher creativity to feed the next idea. So this is an, a, a perpetual cycle, okay? This zigzagging, all right? Going from circuit eight to circuit one, to two, five, six, three, four, seven, eight, back to one, all right? And it's perpetual. So this is a fractal in the long arc and the short arc. So you could look at this as, I've got an idea that a project that's gonna take a year, but, and I'll be following this zigzagging pattern throughout the year, but also every day I can be following this pattern for every little action I take, all right? So it works on the small scale and the big scale. Every day I'm gonna experience fear and I'm gonna meet an obstacle. Now, I can use then, when I'm coming from higher vision to inform my strategy, I can then revisit my fear and let that fill in the gaps of my vision. Why can I do that? Because the vision was originally sourced from inspiration, which is sourced from pleasurable desire, which is sourced in root resilience. So it's really hard for, for fear now to kill the idea because it's, it's so charged up from these other circuits. So now fear just says, well, you're gonna build that bridge across the river. Well, what kind of suspension cables are you gonna use? Oh, I never even envisioned suspension cables. Great, I'm gonna look into that. Let me check back into my wisdom circuit. You know, let that further feed the vision, okay? That's gonna inform my strategy. Right, got to call so-and-so about suspension cables. Not a problem. Right? So you can use fear at this point to poke holes in your vision so that the vision can get stronger, reinforced. Fear is used to fill in the gaps. How do you fill the gaps? You use your previous circuits of your wisdom circuit, your resilience, your desire. That's going to produce the ideas for, for further expanding the vision. Is this making sense to you guys here? on how you can you use fear to inform the vision. But you don't create the vision from the fear. You create vision from your desire and your wisdom. Any, um, any comments or response there? Or let me know if I'm going to. Because too. you're resilient to, to look at fear, no? You, you have a strong foundation. You can allow the fear to feed you or to, to look at it. That's right. You've grounded yourself in your root vitality, which includes your resilience, that is connected with your source creativity, okay? That allows you to um, accept the fear, but not get pulled into it, not buy into it, right? You're just working alongside it, around it, and then once you have a strong, resilient vision based on a pleasurable emotional drive that benefits the life force in you. Um, fear can only then just make that vision more and more complete. The more holes you poke in it, they naturally, those holes fill in with, with the creative, the creativity you've sourced. Were you going to make a comment there, Benjamin? Or I, I wanted to, uh, to say that, uh, excuse me, <laughs> it's like yeah, an okay. engine. Fear, fear becomes like an engine. Yeah. Absolutely too. It's like say, there's the only thing that really drives it. Yes. Yeah. Somehow. If we're not 
um, grounded in our own resilience and vitality. If we don't have much desire or impedance, if we're not accessing our own inner wisdom, if we're not even imagining or dreaming of a vision, fear will kill us quickly. Okay? And then you're going to end up with a poor strategy or you're going to allow fear to design the strategy if you're still keeping the idea. You may have a, an idea, you'll say it's good, but I'm scared of it. But I need the idea because otherwise I won't survive. So now fear is driving the desire and then fear is going to construct the strategy. Do you understand? This enables, this is a workaround so that fear is not influencing the desire and fear is not designing the strategy. Torsten, did you want to add something? I'm just, when I hear the word fear, I'm uh, reminded of our current situation that we're all in here in the world. And I sense a lot of fear. And also, I think the strategy that is used to cope with the situation is fear-based. Yeah, it's a fear-based strategy, most, most like, mostly, yes. Because we're reactionary to it. We, we, we're in immediate reaction to survive. We're not taking time to actually plug ourselves into our root vitality and resilience first, mm. okay? Especially the idea that my immune system is so vulnerable mm. that anything external is going to kill me without mm. even thinking, well, wasn't my immune system designed to, to fight external influences, like, right? We're kind There's of forgetting nothing else that. all day long. <laughs> yeah, well, we're forgetting that. And we're getting sucked into the fear so much that it's actually emptying our vitality. And then guess what? We are losing our vitality and we are losing our immunity. What, what, what's that response, Benjamin? I see you smiling, shaking your head. <laughs> Just feel like that. Uh, so. I mean, think about it. Humans have survived for hundreds of thousands of years. I mean, come on, thousands and thousands upon years. I mean, we, we survived the Spanish flu 100 years ago. I mean, like, but we're somehow buying into the fear so much that the fear is now taking over the, the drive circuit. So we're driven from fear. It's also taking over the strategy circuit. So now our actions are fear-based and then we're running into more and more obstacles, which is fear, giving more fear, which is more fear-based strategy. It's a vicious cycle, okay? And let's just keep locking down and let's just keep locking down and let's just keep locking down and let's never get on a plane. Let's never eat in a restaurant again because why? We're, we've forgotten that we have a natural immune system that thrives off of vitality. We're not using the upper circuits to work around this, okay? We're not using the situation to actually feed our vitality, we're, we're using the situation to deplete our vitality. Now, I can get into the obstacles discussion in a second here, how, how that'll make more sense, because there's a second half here. Before uh, we say that, something? Troy, would you, would you just mind uh, me asking another question? So mm -hmm. I have in my mind this, uh, this full circle, right? Mm -hmm with the voice and connect uh, phases. So feeding it and discovering it. Can I actually map feeding and discovery uh, phases to number five and six? Is this consistent? As you mentioned earlier, that we are usually skipping those two phases. So if you hear, um, tell us, well, we just inject five and six. Are you assuming that we usually go from one, which is spark, to second, which would be equivalent to the embodied step? Uh, when we're looking at the embodiment loop, which we discussed uh, yeah. last time, yeah. Here we have spark, we spark an idea. Now we're gonna connect, add in the desire, also connect with the pleasure and the wisdom to feed back our resilience. Oh, it's still the connect phase. No connect, Both. yeah. And then this can even be connect, and then this will start being voice. This is where we expand it out. But also, you know, vision can work with voice too because it's expanding it out. It's unpacking the idea, okay? Um, so uh, I'll show you in a second how that makes sense. Um, 
here. It'll show you how we use obstacles to source the creativity and then how actually these upper and lower circuits work together in diagonals, all right? So for every desire, it's sourced in wisdom. For every strategy, it's sourced in higher vision. For every action, it's sourced in higher purpose. And for every idea, it's sourced in creativity and creativity brings us the fruit, all right? Um, our emotional desire that is grounded in pleasure feeds back to our root idea or our resilience. Our strategy based in higher vision feeds back to our desire. Our actions, which are sourced in higher purpose, further informs our strategy. Our ideas, which are backed by a higher source of creativity, backs our actions, okay? So in a way, these, these work like triangles, all right? So let's just jump ahead here. We've got a strategy sourced in higher vision, which is grounded in pleasurable desire and drive, which is grounded in resilience. Now, we're gonna, go to, we're gonna wanna take actions and we're gonna run into obstacles. Now, before we engage with the obstacle, we gotta think, okay, higher act, we've got action, which is function. But what about higher purpose? How does the action become more universal? How does this idea not just serve me, but the universe around me, the whole of humanity? How does it give to the entire cosmic web? All right, that's the idea of higher purpose. What's the contribution of the idea as opposed to, I'm just building a business so I can profit from it and make a million bucks. Well, what's the actual contribution of the, the, the business? Well, how does it serve the rest of the world? How does it serve the market? How does it serve individuals, okay? Um, that's gonna bring me into higher purpose, which it's like people talk about the why, okay? But this is a why beyond myself. If I'm going to ask the universe to bless me with a million dollar business, well, what am I giving to the universe? That's the contribution of the idea. Is this um, making sense to you guys? When you're backed with a higher purpose, that brings you into higher creativity as well. And that high, higher creativity gives birth to new ideas. It also influences your actions. Now, as you take action, then the obstacle actually presents you a lesson to learn. It will redirect your purpose. It will redirect your creativity so you actually let the obstacles help direct your creativity. All right, if I'm gonna feed the homeless, but the homeless want drugs instead of the food, right? That's an obstacle. I'm just making that a hypothetical idea, right? What are you gonna do? You're feeding all the homeless. Well, what about other starving people? And what about all those drug addicts? You just what are you going to do? You're going to feed them or are you going to give them money? That they're just going to go buy more drugs. Well, great. Obstacle. Instead of me shutting down my idea or instead of me just plowing through it or say, well, screw those drug addicts. I'm just going to feed the worthy. No, actually, I can find a way because my higher purpose is, let's say, to rebalance humanity, have a redistribution of wealth. Maybe that's the higher contribution of my idea. It's not just about feeding the homeless. Maybe it's about creating a flow of wealth throughout humanity. And so my actions might be here with feeding the homeless, but it also is about um, bringing up humanity into a higher state of mentality, a higher state of health, a higher... Um, state of their own personal contributions to themselves, each other, et cetera. All those obstacles I need just have me say, well, what lesson do I need to learn in order to really reach out to those people? Uh, how do I break down my assumptions so that I can connect with those people more to really find out what they want, they need, instead of me just writing them off, judging them, saying they don't belong with my idea. These obstacles actually allow me to flow around and include which will bring greater creativity, which will feed my higher purpose. The obstacle provides me a lesson so that when I learn the lesson, I actually make a stronger contribution. Let me know if that makes sense or if I just spoke a bunch of gobbledygook. On a very basic level, Troy, 
fear, could I translate it to that fear tells me, hey, please reconnect with your essence at the desire level. Right. Your connection to it. It's like, a, it's like a red flag. Hey, stop. Reconnect with essence and resilience. Or hey, reconnect with purpose. And we, that we, at different qualities, at different uh, stages of manifestation from one through, what is this on the right? One through eight. One, yeah. <laughs> one in the end. So the full, the full circuit. Yeah. Okay. What this does also is when we marry the source creativity with back to our root circuit, this is also where I'm enjoying the fruits of my labor. This is, again, like that winter phase, like, or the harvest. I'm, I'm harvesting from my creativity. Now it's become a concrete reality, and I'm being nourished by my own creativity as well. So I'm making contribution, and the, the, the creativity is contributing to the world on a universal level not just me, and I'm being, it nourishes my own well-being. So there's a balance where both sides are being enhanced, the world and myself. That feeds more ideas. So in a sense, it's, it's sounding absurd to me, but, but interesting that fear invites me to reinforce the energy flow. That's right. That's right. And ask, where is the fear guiding me? Where is it addressing where there might be a leak in the energy flow, okay? Same with the obstacle. Where is it addressing where I might have a distraction in what I'm putting out there or where I really need to focus my energy on what I'm putting out there? It's, it's helping to guide and direct me. If I look at it not as an enemy, but as sort of a red flag to say, hey, re-examine purpose. Hey, re-examine your strategy, re-examine your actions, reconnect with your creativity. That's what the obstacle is doing. It's saying revisit these things, okay? So it gets reinforced and then you can proceed. And that's what fear is doing. Revisit these internal, in these internal things, your idea, desire, wisdom, and vision. So fear makes sure that the structure before continuing to the next phase is solid enough to continue. Otherwise, it, it will break down. Yeah. And don't look at this as so linear. I mean, you're going to be toggling between these circuits. And, you know, if, if, if you know, you're not proceeding, just back it up and then go back forward and you make your way through organically. So don't think this too much as I can't move from one to two until I've really accomplished one. I can't move to five until I've really accomplished two. No, these all count, uh, relate back onto each other in a back and forth flow, all right? Um, so that's what I wanted to show you. Now, you know, we can go on and on and on and on. And, and if you look at, uh, webinar 11, um, you'll see more about these circuits, how they function. And then I did a webinar last year about manifesting realities. Again, looking at this in a slightly different fashion. How do you create intentions and follow through on the intentions? Again, it uses these eight circuits. So the basic ingredients for manifesting creativity is you want um, to invest in your idea but the, the, it's, it's a pleasurable emotional investment. It's not a fear-based investment. You want vision and strategy, but let your strategy be sourced from higher creative vision. You want action, but you wanna marry that action, your daily actions with a higher sense of purpose that goes beyond self, where it makes a contribution. And for everything that happens in the world, uh, whatever gets created, you let that feed back to you and inspire new ideas. Every obstacle is there meant to open more creativity, not close it down. So enjoy the fruits of your labor and to be in response to the world as opposed to in resistance to the world. Okay. Um, 
So to keep it simple, just remember that the creative cycle moves from charging up energy to discharging energy, then charging it back up again. So we're generating, releasing, and then regenerating. And it's in a constant cycle of perpetual motion, just like breathing in, breathing out, breathing in the energy, breathing out the energy. That's the act of creation. So get to know where you are. What season are you in? Allow that season to do its natural work. So if you've got a great idea and you're thinking, I got to hurry up and, and, and um, put that idea out there. Well, if you're in spring, take time to do the internal work. Nurture the idea. Allow it to expand in your mind before you rush out and take action on it. Okay. If you're in the middle of constructing and, and, and you're in the middle of your project, you're constructing it, well, um, maybe you take time to go internally to charge up more, but keep constructing. Don't stop the construction process. If you've finished your project or you've done the final performance of you know, the play you've written and it's been performed and you're getting the reviews and the applause, enjoy the, the, the reviews and the, and the, the applause. Take time to rest after the project is finished. That's your winter phase, okay? Remember that fear tries to dissipate energy that's trying to build up, okay? Fear is just naturally trying to dissipate it. In a way, you've got to be very protective of your new ideas so fear doesn't kill it because fear will come in quickly and kill the idea before the idea had time to take root. So focus on charging up the idea the number one thing that's going to kill an idea is if you ask the question too soon, how do I do this? Don't ask how do I do it or is it possible? Ask that a bit later. First, let the idea feed your creativity, your resilience, your well-being, and take time to dream into it before you ask, how am I going to do it? Look at what is the idea first? Did you want to add something there, Benjamin? Yeah, so instead of moving directly to the doing part, we consider, do I have the energy to do it? Do I have everything to do it? We just make all checks in place. Yeah, and I'd tweak the question. It's. Um, what, does, what energy does this idea give me? Cool. What, what inspiration does it give me? As opposed to, do I have the energy for it? Because you might say, no, I don't. I'm exhausted. Right? So, and if you realize I'm exhausted, then maybe you're in a winter phase and little ideas are popping up. Well, allow yourself to still rest and, and don't even engage with the ideas yet. Just note them. Okay. Yeah. But, but we, we don't give enough time to what does the idea inspire in me? What energy does it give me? We don't feed it back to ourselves enough in the initial stages. We rush into what is this? Is it going to work? And how am I going to do it? So shifting, it's, the idea is just a, a tool to shift our focus on the energy level to, to reinforce our energy which itself uh, shifts then to the next phases. Once we skip that energy reinforcement phase, fear appears fear or obstacles. Appear, and it's going to exhaust you so when you're taking action. It's a back point. A, you missed collecting energy to do the job. Go exactly. back, please. So if I'm not accepting that boulder, uh, well, I'm not listening to... That's right. A manifestation of the energy. Hey, come back, please. Collect me. I mean, if, if I went and planted a garden, if I'm your next door neighbor and I'm, you know, planting seeds in my garden and then the next day I'm like, where's my freaking trees? <laughs> You'd be like, guy, you're nuts. You got to give it time to, to take root and grow and you got to pull the weeds and till the soil and you got to water it and give it some sunlight and give it some time. I say, yeah, but I want my fruits now. I planted apple trees. I don't see any trees here, right? Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, you get your ideas, focus on the life-giving pleasure those ideas give you first. Focus on the resilience that they give you. 
put resilience back into the idea. Just nurture it. Generate energy with it, all right? Fear will come in like uh, disguised as, how are you going to do it? It's too soon, right? Now, when you're in the active phase, you're acting upon the idea. Um, obstacles are trying to block the release of that charged up energy. Just know that. It, it's trying to convince you to withhold and conserve. Don't act. Don't release, okay? To get around that, focus on, well, what's the universal contribution? If I, if I take action on this, it's not just about me, but it is about everything I'm in relationship with. How does that feed everything I'm in relationship with? And how does that obstacle actually focus the contribution instead of preventing the contribution, okay? The obstacle is actually allowing me to be even more creative with how I'm offering up the contribution. So look at the obstacle and say, how is this a lesson? How is this actually directing the focus of my energy as I release it, as I take creative action? So what's really key is before you rush into action or strategy, be sure we discussed this, be sure you're building investment in your idea with uh, resilience, desire, and enjoyment. That's going to give you the charge up. That's going to give you the energy to deal with the challenges and the obstacles. It's going to give you the energy to deal with the days where you feel discouraged. Okay. Um, build your strategies from inspired, resilient vision not from obligation, stress, fear, or anxiety. Allow your actions to be married with higher contribution. That has your actions make more sense. They're actually bigger ideas, bigger actions than just a small daily function. You're, that gives higher purpose to all your daily actions, okay? Use fear to inform the vision. All it's doing is addressing gaps in the vision. It doesn't mean the vision is wrong. It's actually saying, fill, connect more dots, fill in, fill in the little holes there and use resi your resilience to re-inspire the vision. Come back to resilience, inner wisdom, creativity to revisit the vision. Use the obstacles to inform your creativity. Just because there's a, a roadblock doesn't mean it stops you from traveling down the road. It requires you to be more creative with the road you're traveling. So it's presenting a lesson. It's asking you to awaken a new strength. That's what I mean by lessons. If there's a lesson here and I master that lesson, if I master that obstacle, I've awakened a new strength, which opens even more possibility for me. So higher purpose will enrich your, your actions and it will give you richer rewards because you've used new strengths because of those obstacles. So it's made your contribution even richer and stronger. Um, what do you guys take away as just in general? I know we went over time. Um, either what feels inspiring or what feels clear or what feels uh, new and different for you. What's really cool is that I'm holding on to my vision and uh, and the creation, and then introducing fear. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Great. Anyone else? What you take away? Well, I take away. It's also important to to pause in, in a sense, not like. Uh, not going from desire into action, but also looking at the, the wisdom and this. No? And, and this for me means, okay, I need to give myself a little uh, retreat or something, no? that I first look inside and then go to my inner work and, and things. And then with this wisdom, I go for more. Great. And Shar, when you were saying you, you love this, it was very interesting perspectives. It's great. Yeah. Um, allow them to absorb into the back of your mind, uh, sit on it, reflect on it for, for several days. 
Um, what I wanted to say also in relation to, to what you guys were, or what you were saying there, Torsten and anyone else is, um, we live in an action oriented society. So it tends to rush us into the, the second phase of the cycle where as soon as I have an idea, I got to rush out and do something about it. And I've never given my time, myself time to charge up the energy. And that's one big reason for burnout. Okay. We're, we're acting too soon. Yeah, go ahead, Benjamin. So we are trying, so we are, are we, aren't we assuming that the, 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 are we, aren't we expecting the action gives us the connection to the essence? Isn't it the other way around? That way around. We, we should firstly connect with our action as a fundament, as a basis, then go to the action on an energetic level. That's right. Look at the idea is the cause, the action is the effect. And we tend to look at it the other way around. The action is, we, we need to be based in action and then we'll get the effects. No, 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 no. The action is the end effect, okay? There's all this other stuff that's happening first. The internal cause and then the outward effect, which is our action. Then we get the next reaction, which is the fruits of our labor. And that becomes the next cause, okay? So, yeah, if, uh, if we give priority to action, I'm not saying don't take action, but I'm saying invest in your actions, take time to invest, take time to charge up energy. Same with those of you that are coaches. Just because your client is inspired does not mean you rush into what's possible and what are you going to do. Actually, let them be connected to the inspiration, how that feeds back to their well-being. Let it build more and more vision and resilience within them. Then they will naturally, when they're charged up so much, they're going to say, I know what I can do. And it's very clear to me. And I got the motivation to do it. Right? And then you could throw an obstacle in their way and they'll say, yeah, no, no that's not a problem because I, I, I have a connection to my creativity. Yeah, 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 you can throw that in the middle of the road and that, I know how to get around that because I'm connected to that internal wisdom, that internal creativity, that higher vision, that purpose. Then actions and strategies make sense and there's this engine roaring inside with de the desire to move and that movement doesn't deplete me, it actually feeds back to me and that's creating the perpetual motion. Okay. So, so to say, action is razor to be perceived as a side effect of, of the right energy flow than as a tool to get to the right energy flow. That's right. So we need to spend time getting in the energy flow, into the rhythm and the flow. The action is a natural byproduct. Action will naturally happen. So we are, uh, we are making up that misconception, basically every day, isn't that? Well, yeah, in a way, it's no surprise that our world is functioning from scarcity because we're running on empty. We're, we're acting without a charge up of energy. And then that's a fractal everywhere. It's like we're, we're running on empty, right? We're, we're, we're acting with less and less inspiration and what we're filling it with is more fear as a motivator as opposed to vitality. If that makes sense, it feels it clear. Does. In my head. It does. Know. So, so it's completely consistent. I feel with uh, what I just said, and which you extended, Razor, in that sense. So, if fear, on the basis of emptiness, I try to to connect to the essence by actions. Yes, That's and we just, think just just uh, consistent with that. Yeah, and we think that all those actions are going to fill me up and 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 connect me to some sort of a. Uh, eternal source and uh, no the actions are the effect of the eternal source we need to connect first to the eternal source okay which so is basic, the eternal source so basic verification questions would be well to, am i trying here to fill the emptiness with the effect of the actions or just the opposite is this action thriving on an existing connection with my essence. Right. 
That's, that is what will create more flow and pleasure and balance because there's inflow outflow, right? And uh, the, the action is just a natural effect of the flow. All right. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. You wanted to say something? Well, it's an act of self-allowance uh, to grab the ease of life and the enjoyment. Yes. And we're following natural cycles of energy as well. We're not working against it. Right? And that's where we're getting burnout. That's where we're feeling less and less inspired. The, the, the more we work against the natural flow, the natural cycles, the natural seasons, I mean, you might be able to, you know, build a garden one year and burn the crop and then plant another garden and burn the crop. But, but after a while, you know, um, if you don't allow that soil to rest, for example, take its winter, or you, you keep extracting from the soil without putting anything back into it, you're sucking all the energy out of it. Nothing's going to grow after a while. Four or five times you run that cycle. Uh, like this is symptomatic with overachievers a lot where they, they, they perform, 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 perform. They're, they're not giving time to replenish. They're not giving time to charge up. They're just acting externally, 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 and there's nothing coming back in. Or these martyrs, people that are just selflessly serving all the time and they take no nourishment back from their accomplishments. They just say, oh no, I need nothing from it. Don't even pay me. I'll just give, 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 give. They run into depletion, all right? Because there's no inflow outflow. So when you work with inflow outflow, I mean, there might be people here that, that spend too much time on the inflow and they don't release. Well, then there they gotta be more action oriented, okay? But I'm saying the majority of us have been trained to be so action oriented, we're forgetting about replenishing ourselves within and allowing ideas to germinate within, okay? So find out where you are defaulting and then find out where you need to spend a little bit more time so you counterbalance yourself so you have a, a nice inflow outflow and what you'll feel is perpetual motion and when you accept each phase of your cycle there is more pleasure all around and you will find you are thriving as opposed to just keeping your neck above water and surviving yeah Okay, so, um, and we cover these in all our modules. Module one is about building resilience. Module two is working with resistance. Module three is working with this creative cycle specifically. Okay, those eight circuits of consciousness. Um, our conflict course is neutralizing all these power gains and neutralizing fear, neutralizing obstacles. And then our group facilitation course works with that on more of a cosmic level, a, a group dynamic level, okay, and how you have all this web of relationships using the very same skills, but in the context of uh, groups and communities. Our next webinar is next week, May 20th, and it's called Dress the Night to Slay the Dragon. So it's about how do we prepare ourselves and motivate ourselves to actually work directly with um, any internal fears instead of just like, pushing ourselves to conquer a fear, there's a way that we can build our own resilience, our willpower, our desire, so we are invested in dealing with a fear within ourselves, a shadow, so that we're, we're now, it's a pleasure to conquer it as opposed to uh, an obligation or putting us through a stressful exercise because it's natural that we would resist conquering fear. But there's a way that we can flow with ourselves to um, conquer our fears and gain new strengths. So that's what that is all about. It's how do you set that foundation so that you are dealing with uh, fears and conquering them in a healthy way as opposed to um, pressuring ourselves and traumatizing ourselves in order to improve, okay? Um, what do you walk, uh, any, any last words on what you walk away with? Um, and I will be, uh, I'm, throughout June, I'm moving our, our, our modules online just because of the way the world is handling the COVID thing. And uh, it's, 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 
no guarantee that things are truly open. So I'm not, so I'm just going to run things online during June. Um, Cause I don't even know if I can travel to do these modules. <laughs> so just saying, forget it. It's online. We'll do module one the weekend of June 12th. We'll do module two the weekend of June 19th. And we'll do our conflict workshop the weekend of June 5th. So um, last words from anyone. And I really appreciate you staying the, uh, the extra time. here. And yes, Benjamin, we can talk after the, uh, after the webinar. I'll, um, I just want to close, close the recording. So, um, are we all good? Your head's full? <laughs> it's like cinema, you know? Great. Um, anytime you have questions, contact me. Info at essence-dynamics.com or troy at essence-dynamics.com. I'm happy to speak with you. Uh, if you want more information, past recordings, any of that, I'll send you those links. Um, I'm happy to do that. Some links we have released publicly on our YouTube channel, EE Dynamics. Uh, other ones, I keep it on a private playlist. Uh, so it's really just by request, but um, you're, you're free to listen to any of our past webinar recordings. And once in a while, I'll, I'll take a private recording and publicly release it, you know, as I see fit. And, um, we're slowly building this, the, that, that channel. And you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at EE Dynamics. So um, thank you everyone for joining. If anybody wants to stick around uh, after I stop the recording, feel free to do so. Until then, um, enjoy um, observing your own creative cycle within you. Observe the creative cycle around you. Take time to charge up energy. Take time to release it and practice being in a balance of charging up, releasing, charging up, releasing. So it becomes as natural as breathing. And um, I look forward to seeing you next week with our next webinar, number 14, uh, Dress the Night to Slay the Dragon. <laughs>